This is WYMT Mountain Sports, your home for the Kentucky Wildcats and local high school sports. The losing streak started with Auburn. The football Cats lost by three, and then they lost by 26 to the Mississippi State Bulldogs. And it even got worse on Saturday night. Kentucky now 4-4 four four as the Tennessee Volunteers hand UK its worst loss of the season. A 31-point blowout inside Commonwealth Stadium. 482 yards of total offense for the Vols. Kentucky defensive coordinator DJ Elliott was not on the field last night. Instead, he moved up to the box to try to get a better picture on things. But it didn't matter. UT had a mix that the Cats weren't really ready for. Just let them see the overall picture, you know, better, and uh, and you know, just see, you know, the, the, this team is so much misdirection, and they they did a nice job. They were influencing us out and had some some new plays and some things that were, uh, you know, it's good to have somebody up there that you could see the whole perimeter and uh, and get better vision and, and uh, you know, hopefully have you know with with him being up there have good eyes on the on the whole picture. Kentucky's next opponent is Georgia head coach Mark Rick benched Grayson Lambert to give Fatone Bata his first career start, but he threw four interceptions in the loss to Florida Saturday. Coach Rick saying today he is open to all possibilities when it comes to who will start this weekend versus Kentucky. The Bulldogs come off consecutive losses where they scored fewer than 10 points. First time that's happened since 1969. So here we go. The football Cats head to Athens this Saturday. Kentucky at Georgia. Last year, the Dogs beat the Cats 63-31. to A noon kick time on the SEC Network for that one. A couple of Moorhead State Eagles are Pioneer Football League Players of the Week after the Eagles defeat Drake in triple overtime on Saturday. Senior wide receiver Justin Cornwall is the PFL Offensive Player of the Week. Recorded his Third straight 100-yard game with 134 yards, that including tying the school record with three touchdown catches, while senior Luke Keller takes home the PFL Defensive Player of the Week. Keller with 14 tackles and two sacks. Now the Cincinnati Bengals come off a bye week with a chance to do something that has not do been done in franchise history. Start a season 7-0. and If they wanted to do that, they'd have to get by this guy, Big Ben Roethlisberger. First game back, of course, he had a sprained MCL. Had the last four weeks off, looked good. First quarter, he puts the Steelers up 7-0. That's Antonio Brown on the touchdown catch. Fourth quarter we go, three minutes to go in the game. Steelers up 10-6. Now the Bengals have the lead, a nine-yard score from A.J. Green. Bengals up 13-10. Next play from scrimmage, Big Ben is picked off by Reggie Nelson. Now Big Ben, he did get up to his 40,000 career passing mark in this game, but... That one didn't help. That sets up a 44-yard field goal from Mike Nugent. Cincinnati up six with a minute 47 to go. Now the Steelers do drive down the field. Four seconds to go. Last chance. Ben Roethlisberger. Oh, he completed it, but that was out of bounds, and there's no time left. The Bengals lead Pittsburgh 7-0, 16-10 over the Steelers. All right, let's go around the NFL now. Vikings in Chicago. Uh, these guys, they don't care if it's November. They like their Halloween costumes that much. Teddy Bridgewater, he completed six passes to Stephon Diggs in this one. And on this play, Diggs does Diggs things. Bridgewater and the Vikings beat the Bears 23-20. to Minnesota now 5-3 on the year. Titans at Texans. Tennessee trying to snap a five-game losing streak. But Brian Hoyer throws some beauties today. That one to DeAndre Hopkins. That's a 21-yard hookup on the score. And then this one to Nate Washington. 42 yards on the hookup. Titans haven't won since week one, 20-6. Houston, no problems today. Hoyer's former team, the Browns, hosting the Arizona Cardinals. Cleveland went into the locker at halftime recess with a 20-10 lead. But the Cardinals score 24 points in the second half behind Carson Palmer's arm as he throws four touchdown passes in Cleveland. The Browns don't score in the second half and lose their third straight. They go to Cincinnati this Thursday. Finally, the game of the day, Saints-Giants. Yes, it's in fast motion. That's because there's all kinds of history made in this one. Here are just a few of the notes. Saints quarterback Drew Brees throws for seven touchdowns, ties an NFL record for most in a single game. Giants quarterback Eli Manning, meanwhile, well, he's the first ever quarterback to throw six touchdowns and no interceptions. And look at the scoreboard. Lose. 
This game ties for the third most points scored in an NFL game. 101 total points. Saints 52, Giants 49. Holy cow. Coming up next, we go out to the Goodies Headache Relief Shot 500, where there were plenty of headaches. Highlights from Martinsville as the race for the chase continues. Welcome back. This year's World Series is averaging 14 million viewers through four games, up 18% from last year's four game average of 11.9 million viewers. Tonight, game five, Royals at Mets. Let's go to City Field in Flushing, New York. Matt Harvey gets the start for the Mets. Bottom one, no score. It's the Grandy Man, Curtis Granderson. Lift off. one nothing Mets. First solo shot of this World Series. The Mets go on to score another run, but the Royals tie it up late. And as you can see, this game's still going on. They go to extras. It's 2-2 two to two, currently in the bottom of the 10th. Eight drivers, three races going into Sunday's race at Martinsville. One of the eight drivers would clinch a spot in the championship at Homestead. There's only four slots, so let's see who would take that first one. Joey Logano, he's won the last three races. He had the pole position to start at Martinsville today. Logano leading with 66 laps to go. Brad Kozlowski gets into Matt Kenseth, though, but we haven't heard the last from him. Oh, buddy. Kenseth back on the track later. Logano leading, trying to lap him, but Kenseth says, oh, no, no, no. Purposely gets into Logano, puts them both into the wall. Kenseth finishes 38th. He's out of the chase for the Sprint Cup. Logano calling Kenseth a, quote, complete coward after the race. But the fans loved it. All right, let's finish this thing up. A caution sets up a two-lap dash to the finish. Jeff Gordon, he's retiring at the end of the season, but he's not done yet. Holds off Jamie McMurray and clinches a spot in the championship race in Homestead in three weeks. Jeff Gordon wins at Martinsville. Now the basketball cats play two exhibition games before the regular season begins Friday the 13th and that exhibition sketch starts Monday night. Kentucky hosts Ottawa out of Kansas, not Canada. So far, uh, point guard Tyler Eulis really showed out in the blue white scrimmage last week with his 15 assists. Michael Mortar really enjoying playing with Eulis, but at the same time, these guys are just ready to play against other guys because they play against each other every day. Tyler, Tyler, he helps us tremendously, you know. He, he makes my job specifically so much easier. He puts the ball in my hands when I'm ready, you know what I mean? So um, not just shooters, but everybody, you know. Tyler's a great point guard and probably the best in the nation. So we expect a lot from him, and I feel like he provides a lot for us. So It'll be good for us as coaches to see all the entire team on one bench, to see, uh, you know, the, the, the flow of the game, uh, substitutions, um, who's playing well with who, as opposed to really just going at each other every day in practice. So I think, this, I think Monday and, and you know, the, the following exhibition game will, will be really helpful for us. Ottawa, the Braves come to Rupp Arena tomorrow night, 7 o'clock tip time. It'll be on the SCC Network Plus. Kentucky is 53-4 and all-time in exhibition games, including a perfect 12-0 under the direction of John Calipari. How about some NBA? Russell Westbrook and the Oklahoma City Thunder hosting the Nuggets tonight. Third quarter, Kenneth Fareed banging on him. And that isn't even the best play the former Moorhead State star had, though, tonight. Flashback to the first quarter. Fareed says, get that junk out of here, Kyle Singler. He swats Singler to the Raptors, the former Duke Blue Devil. Take another look. Fareed says, bruh, don't try me. Fareed had eight points, two blocks, two rebounds. OKC gets the last lap, though. Thunder win, 117-93. to Now, finally tonight, middle school football, the Division II state championship. Belfry wins its fourth straight state title, defeating South Oldham 14-8. The Northern Pulaski seventh graders grab a title. They shut out Bowling Green 36 to nothing. And the third team to win a title, the Johnson County eighth graders. They win the Division I championship 38-36 over Bowling Green Junior High. And then finally, Pikeville also competing for a state title in Division Three, but falls to Cal 16 to 12. Panthers finish runner up. Our round ball previews continue tomorrow with the Barberville girls at six. If you miss the boys, you can, of course, check their preview out on WYMT.com. We'll be back after this.